Living on Somerset Street with your sister Leela. I was a young girl fresh from the country then. Yeah, and you had the biggest butt I ever saw. Steve, you don't stop. But it's the truth. Good looking behind. Said to myself when I first saw it, she got to be from down home because they don't make behinds like that in the city. Steve. Well, it's the truth. Don't your old men ever think about nothing besides behinds? Legs and boobs, but mostly behind. Oh, man. I remember. You sneak through the living room window in the house with that crazy Charles because he wanted to surprise me. Yeah, old Charles. Boy, he, he sure was in a hurry to get home from that wall. He was your sister's first husband, right? No, honey, third. Third, third. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it in the Oh, y'all look so good in your uniforms, especially you. Well, you know I did. I was so tacky, I didn't want you to see me. Yeah. I saw you, though. I couldn't miss that butt. However... I knew the next time you saw me, I'd have it together, and then you wouldn't be able to resist me. Yeah, I knew it, too. Mm. I took you out on our first date that very night. Yes, you did. Yeah, those were some beautiful days. Oh, weren't they? Yeah. Those walks we used to take in the park. You were the freshest man. I was only doing what a man supposed to do. No, you were fresh, Steve Jackson. <laughs> I wonder if that tree's still there. <laughs> you ain't no damn good. You know that? I used to stop by that tree and we used to kiss. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I used to take you out by that tree and press you against it real hard. And you used to love it. Stop! No, it's the truth. You hardly wait till I come by and take you out of that tree and press you against it. You used to say, oh, Steve, press me again, press me again. <laughs> Steve, you know you're lying. You know you are. Girl, you couldn't get enough of that tree. Oh, yeah. man. That was all an act. An act? Yes, sir. Sarah, you was hardly acting. Oh, yes, I was, too. You just didn't know what was going on. I knew if I acted all shy and scared, that would make you like me more. Woman, you can't fool me with no act. I see you married to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got to admit you got me there, Sarah. <laughs> but if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. You know something? Yeah. After 20 years of marriage, two kids, and three jobs, you know, yeah. you still got the biggest butt I ever saw. <laughs> You're my queen, Sarah. You're my queen. Thank you, my dear husband. It makes me very happy to hear you say that. Hey, young blood. What's happening? Same old, same as old head. Vacation start today, huh? Yep. You decided what you're gonna do? I don't know. I might just walk the streets for two weeks, bringing sunshine and brightness to lonely dudes like you. That's not funny. <laughs> Come on, buy your drink. <laughs> How's your other job? Rotten, boring, and underpaid. But thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Same here. Say, man, let's go to Zenobia's tonight. Where? Zenobia's. Man, you got to be crazy. We ain't got that kind of money. Well, will we ever? Now, come on, man, I feel like cutting loose. Bottle of beer costs $5 in that place. Look, man, you only live once. Now, what you say, homeboy? Nothing doing. You ever been there? Yeah. And no, I dropped some people off at the cab, but look at you, I could be some fine mamas coming in that place. Count me out, young blood. That's too fancy for me. Some fine mamas coming in there. No. To your vacation. Hey, Freddy. Freddy, come here, come here. Have you ever been to Zenobia? <laughs> well, would you tell this man about Zenobia's, please? 
What's there to tell? Once you go in, you don't never want to come out. <laughs> it's the hippest place in the world. <laughs> you gotta check it out, Steve. <laughs> Let's go tonight. Let's, shall we check it out? I see how I feel after Sarah goes to sleep. After Sarah goes to sleep? You mean you got to sneak out? <laughs> this game, you mean to tell me you're so in that you got to sneak out the house, Jack? You better tighten up on your married life, Jack. Sure, you, you tell her you're going out, and that's it. Oh, yes, you just gonna leave Irma and go on out, right? That's right, Jack. I'm boss in my house. I'm the king, B O S. Yes. No, <laughs> sneak it out. <laughs> sure. Man, I snap my fingers and Irma jump up and don't come down till I tell her to. That's right. All right. You name the time. All right. You meet me at one o'clock. One o'clock. One o'clock. After Irma goes to sleep. <laughs> <Man. I do. laughs> Remember something to get in there, don't you? Yeah, but don't worry about that. You just look important. Act like we're into something. Your names, please. from the law office where Irma works. What do you say? It says, to whom it may concern, the bearers of this letter are two very important men in the diamond business. Any courtesies you can extend to them would be greatly appreciated. Signed, Jerome Mordecai Wilkinson. Who's Jerome Mordecai Wilkinson? I have no idea, but I sure hope he don't show up here tonight. I'm Steve Jackson. This is uh, Wardell Franklin. Nice to meet you both. You uh, look like you must be new customers here. That's right. Uh, first time. I certainly hope you fellas enjoy yourselves enough to want to come back soon. You will find us candid and to the point. Your pleasure is our business, and I'm sure you'll find plenty here to your liking. Well, I, I already have. Why, thank you. Well, why don't you fellas move around, find something nice to do. If you get bored out here and you're looking for some real excitement, there is always the room with the red door in the back. What, what's in there? Happiness. Or sadness. What do you mean by that? Well, why don't you go back there and find out? And, uh, Jackson, you behave yourself here. Jackson, I think she was digging on you. She sure is a fine looking mama. Yeah. I thought I said that, huh?
you think going on back there? I don't know. Hookers, maybe. Stuff. No, we're gonna play, man. It costs $150 to get in this game. Now, if you haven't got it, agitate the gravel and take this lane with you. We got the money, John. Good dollars. Get up. New point coming up. That's right. $50 on the dynamite lady. Here we go. 
Now, y'all, come on. Please cover this area because this money is waiting for friends. Be nice and live. No time to get brave, Turkey. Put it in the bag. Give me those rings. Keep them up. Just in case somebody's wearing a heater, everybody strip down in their underwear. Ladies included. Move it! You too, lady? I don't wear underwear. for 10 minutes. Anybody tries to move before that gets shot. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for a very lovely evening. Never have so few owed so much to so many. Good night. I'm going up the rough side of the mountain on my way home. Thank you. 
truly wonderful. Be seated, would you please? Uh, we want to thank our choir for that beautiful and inspiring rendition of a spiritual very close to our hearts. Now, I should like at this time to remind those of you attending our church picnic next Sunday that buses will depart from the front of the church after the service. Now, we want to take a moment also to ask the weak among you to refrain from bringing brown paper bags to the picnic. We're going to have enough brown paper bags with the lunch in them. You know what I mean? I mean, after all, we are having a church social and not a fraternity boat ride. Now, I repeat, <laughs> there will be no, there will be no joy juice allowed. Yes. Now, let me hear what I said. No joy juice allowed. Would you repeat that for me one more time? No, no joy juice allowed. Now, we will, right after the service, search all the choir robes. I want everybody to understand, the buses will not leave before the service is over. And he who hesitates will be left. I was hoping to paint the kids' room before they got home so they'd have some place fresh to come home to. And maybe we could shop for some new carpet and curtain handle flavor. What do you think, Steve? Honey? Steve? Steve, I know you hear me. Steve? What you hit me for? You must have been dreaming. Who are you dreaming about? You did hit me. suit when I took it to the cleaners? Sarah, oh. Sarah, is, is that a nine? Uh-huh. Is that a one? Yeah. And that, is that a four? Uh -huh. And is that another one? Uh -huh. And another nine? Uh -huh. Nine, one, four, one, nine? That's my, I won. That's my, my ticket. My ticket? How much for? Oh, my goodness. <gasps> 
Fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Zenobia's? Zerno? She mad, ain't she? Huh? Well, what you gonna do? I'm gonna find that wallet, Wardell. How? By any means necessary. And, and, and... I want you to help a young man. Well, I'm your man, homeboy. Well, what's your first step? I ain't sure. But we gotta find those robbers. We can't go to the police. Because we don't know if we can trust them if they know what's in the wallet. And if we don't tell them what's in the wallet, they ain't gonna waste no time looking for no lost wallet with nothing in it. So I figure we gonna have to get out in the street and kind of keep our ears and eyes open until we pick up on some clues. Well, we can't get out there ourselves. For that kind of money? The hell we can. Oh, man, I freeze. No, see, y'all got the wrong. No, you wrong. See, I haven't done anything. We're looking for Sharp Eye Washington. Who looking for him? Uh, Steve Jackson, and this is my friend Wardell Franklin. And we want him for a job. What kind of job? Well, some property ours was stolen. We want him to get it back for us. Cost you $500. 500 Oh, we ain't got that kind of money. $400? Uh, I think we don't have to go How about 300 You show you Sharp Eye Washington, the private detective. Yeah, I'm Sharp Eye Washington, the one and only. Never be another like me. Yeah, well, see, man, we're working people. See, I drive a taxi cab, and I mean, like, $300, man. Huh. 
man. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to be a private detective. It's rough. There's people looking for me now. Who? None of your business, who? Just make up your mind, because I got a split. How about $200? All you risk is $200, but I put my life on the line in service to you. That's right. It's a lonely, dangerous life being a private detective. All you do is risk a little money. I solve the cases, and people after me. Look at my eye, my right eye. See how my right eye? See how bloodshot it is? You know I got that way from sleeping with one eye open, baby. Life ain't easy. Always on the move. People after me with guns. That's right. Looking under the hood of your car for bombs. Peeking out windows. Peering down hallways. <laughs> In the movies, right? You see the movies, always got some super nigga always killing some white boy in the mafia. <laughs> Beating up the crooked police. That's not true, and it don't help me either, you know what I mean? And women, yeah, they all got women. Black detective in the movie, always got a woman. Watch yourself. Well, I ain't had a woman in how long? Months! Months. I might as well be a monk. And that's what it's like being a detective. It's the real truth on it. It's always steady on the case. I'm getting my thing together too, baby. Cause I'm sharp by Washington. Study on the case. We we give you fifty dollars down and the rest when you find our property. You got a deal. Just write down your name, address, and phone number. Like I said, you got nothing to worry about, cause I'm gonna find your property. But, but, we ain't told you what we lost. I was about to bring that up. It's something very valuable. Yeah. And it's more precious than gold. That's right. It's a wallet. I thought so. What's in it? Some family pictures. And some, some sentimental souvenirs. <laughs> I thought it was something like that. Well, study on the case. <laughs> Say, man. Hey! It's just my way of staying one step ahead of the thieves and hustlers. Hey, wait. I know, a wallet. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Look, wait a minute. What's that? Tickets to the policeman's ball and the con days are over, Washington. Huh? He, he he stole our money. He stole a lot of people's money, fella. We've been on your trail a long time, Washington. I was framed. You said that in Des Moines, Iowa, where you were Cleophus Washington, a preacher. You escaped from custody. You said that in Jersey City, where you were Henry Hawthorne Washington, a bogus lawyer. You jumped bail. Your clients are still waiting for you to handle their cases. Looky, that's my cousin, Clarence Washington. That's not me. That's not me. Damn, man, we trusted you. I mean, why us? Why not you, brother? Take him away. Oh, uh, wait a minute. He stole our money. What do we do about that? Well, I advise you to go to the station house and file a complaint for the return of your money. But let me warn you, you'll be waiting on a long line. Is the governor in town? Get him down here. I want to see Thank you. We would like to see Congressman Lane.
Excuse me, Congressman Lincoln. There are two gentlemen waiting outside to see you. Yes, of course, from the mayor's office. No, sir. Ah, then perhaps the press. Well, I think not, sir. They look, well, rather ordinary. Oh, oh. Constituents. Yes, sir. Mr. Jackson. All right. Frank. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Ah, brothers. Brothers, I am so glad to see you. Mr. Jackson, how do you do? And Mr. Franklin, I'm delighted to see you. I'm Jackson. He's Franklin. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Brothers. Ah, sir. <laughs> Have a seat. Now then, Mr. Wilson. Jackson. Jackson. Oh, 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 yes, of course. You see, I am so glad to see you. It isn't often I'm privileged to see our more common folk, the real salt of the earth folk, you know. As I was just saying to my beloved wife the other day, it is because of knowing the ordinary folk in our daily lives that we can keep in touch with the pulse of the grassroots. <laughs> now then, brothers, what can I do for you? Yes, we have this problem. Problem? Your problems are my problems. And our problems are the problems of all black people. We were robbed, Congressman Lincoln. No. Yes, at gunpoint. Gunpoint? What a shame. Shame. It um, wasn't brothers, was it? Uh, 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 they were wearing masks, but... We are sure they were black. Oh, my people, my people. How long? Hmm? How long? Why do we do this to one another? And now you were saying you were robbed. The other night, our wallets, our jewelry and some very valuable mementos that we kept. But never fear. <laughs> never fear. There's one simple phone call to my friend, my good friend, Lieutenant Hardcastle, down at the police headquarters, want to go a long way in capturing this traitor to our race. Now then, where did you say this um, robbery took place? Madame Zenobia. Is the line busy? Uh, Madame Zenobia? You know the place? Well, uh, yes. Is, I, <clears throat> I've heard of um, that illegal um, after hours uh, club, a den of iniquity. Yes, a lot of hip people go by there, and people from all different sizes of the track. Irresponsible ingrates, brothers. You would be well advised not to venture down that dark path. But just last week, I was saying to my beloved wife that I would not be caught dead in such a place. Hi, Jasmine. How are you doing today, sugar? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were at a conference. Brother man! What's happening? Peggy Lane! No, no, no. Around here, folks call me Mrs. Lincoln. You know, in spite of that whole rip-off thing, John, I had me a ball, I want to tell you. <laughs> Peg, dear, must you always speak dialect? It's so condescending. We must rid ourselves of these linguistic shackles. Honey, hush. Y'all got to forgive my husband. I love his sweet self to death. But ever since he got himself a little bit of position, he think he into something. It was a time when he still liked fried chicken. Whew. 
I get so tired of going to them corny dances. Corny dinners we keep getting invited to. You know, the one where you be the token one and everybody standing around looking at you like you something in the zoo. Well, I got tired. And about six months ago, I got old Super Black over here to take me to where my folks is. Well, I figured you'd take me to a dinner, take me dance or something. And Charlie come taking me to Zenobia. <laughs> he knew all about us, all the waitresses by their first name. And come to find out, he a Charlie member. <laughs> Damn, it blew my mind. This nigga is something else, honey. <laughs> Well, you see, I discovered that a great number of my constituents... Uh, oh, honey, now, that ain't nothing for you to be ashamed of. Them politicians you be hanging out with in Washington be getting into their pleasures a whole lot worse of ways than that, honey. Right, brother? How can one work for the good of one's people if one's wife continually airs in public one's dirty laundry? The phrase is, putting one's business in the street. You see what I mean? So what brings y'all around here visiting? Uh, well, we, we we trying to get some help uh, to track down them, them stick-up fellas because we lost some very valuable property the other night. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And them niggas interrupted the best role I ever had. Mm. Listen. There's a big-time hood named Geechee Dan Buford you should see. Oh, also, get a rundown on a local hustler named Little Seymour. Now, personally, I think Little Seymour the one who done it. But be careful. Little Seymour travels with a bodyguard named Big Percy who can get real ugly. You sure this the place? Yes, I'm sure. Now, look, all we got to do is go on inside, see this cat, Little Seymour, and ask him about our property. Now, come on. I saw? Yes, I saw what you saw. And don't be worrying about nothing, because if the dude mess with me, I'm gonna knock him out. You know why? Because I'm from off the corner. Now, come on. You just let some cat look funny at me and see if I ain't on this case. That's right. Because my money is in this place someplace, too. That's right. And where my money is concerned, I don't play. I get mean when you mess with my green. Now, you see if I'm kidding. Say, man. Say, brother. Say, I'm talking to you, man. What you want? You seen Big Percy around here? Who wants to know? I'm asking the questions, sissy. Sissy! I asked you a question, chump! Yeah! Why you say that in the first place? You dig it? You knock a dude down, you get some respect. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now, you understand what I'm talking about? See, that's the only way to do it. That's the American way. You understand that? Now, the dude said that Big Percy, Little Seymour's bodyguard, ain't here. So let's go get Little Seymour. You understand? Go ahead. Let's get it. Go ahead. Now, now listen here, y'all. I'm looking for a, a corny little runt named Seymour Pettigrew. I know you're in here, Seymour, so come on out. I hear you so ugly till the sun refused to shine every time you come out. You so ugly, 
till it's against the law in 20 states to marry you. Yeah, that's it, Steve. You're cooking. You just keep on talking. He's in here somewhere. And just remember, I got your back. And dig, say something about his mama. Got you. Let me get him. I hear your breath so bad till you put the three leading toothpaste out of business. And I'm Big Percy. What you turkeys want? Seymour, see, I, um, see, I just got out the hospital. See, I was, I was in the war, veteran, and uh, see, I mean, every once in a while, see, I just uh, have, I have these uh, fits, you know, and the fits are, um, I mean, I'll be uh, jumping bad and trying to make an impression on, on people, you know, but it's some fits that's, that's doing it. But and then every once in a while, see, they just uh, go down and then I'll be uh, myself again, you know, and I don't be jumping bad, but it's not my fault, Mr. Seymour. But I, I'm not reaching for a gun. I, I got a card, see, the card says, um, if in case of a fit, please put this man unharmed in a cab and send him home to his wife, she paid the bill. You see, <clears throat> so I didn't want you to get uh, the wrong impression, Mr. Seymour. You loud talk me. Nobody loud talks to little Seymour. Oh, now, see, Mr. Seymour, that, that's, see, I didn't, he's the one that loud talk you. But see, first of all, you got to understand about his grandmother. See, see, his, his grandmother brought up him and his sister. See, I mean, ever since they was down, they was down there picking cotton. Mr. Seymour, now, I'm, I know you can identify with picking cotton. Well, if you can't, then I can dig that. But anyway... See, what happened was the grandmother's old lady, and so his sister's been keeping life savings on her because she don't trust the banks. She dig banks and ripping people off and stuff. And then she went to Zenobia's, you dig? And then Zenobia's then uh, was robbed of the money. And the life savings just went. So my man said, well, let's go check out Mr. Seymour because he's, I mean, you are highly thought of in our community, you dig? I mean, you even bigger than Geechee Dan Buford, you dig? So, uh, anyway, uh, he's desperate to talk to you, so that's why he's calling you all the names. But if you notice, uh, Mr. Seymour, he never said nothing about your mother. So he wasn't that desperate. You see, so, uh, uh, Stephen, come over here and apologize to Mr. Seymour. This is my friend Stephen, you know, who's going to apologize to you. Let's get a few things straight. Yes. First, whoever hits Zenobia is going to pay for it with the skin off their tail when I find out who it is. Because me and her is tight. And second, that story you just told me is bullshit. Yes, sir. 
And third, here's a little something for niggers who loud talk little Seymour. Kia! Sir, what are we gonna do with these fools? Girl, I don't know. No, 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 wait a minute. You see, because first of all, that was the hardest hitting, fastest, baddest little black man of colored descent I have ever seen in my life. But I had him on the run, didn't I, home? Didn't you? Sure. What did he hit me with, his foot or his hand? Both of them, at the same time. Wardell, honey. Your imagination is going to get you killed one of these days. Now get up and let me take you home and try to patch you up. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Don't forget, homeboy, tomorrow we're going after big time Geechee Dan Buford. You got it, Dick. I'm here to see Mr. Geechee Dan. Wait here. I'm 22 percent. I want to know how you're feeling. I'm here to see you, boss. We don't want to let him sit him down. You won't. Well, sir, um, see, it's like this. 
Some property of mine was stolen, and and I need some help. So what you coming to me for? Well, I heard that don't nothing go down unless you know about it. Man, get out my face. No, 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 just a minute to get you, Dan. Uh, Mr. Buford. Mr. Mr. Buford. Uh. If you don't get away from here soon, they're going to be picking up your head from across the street. Now move out, sucker. Wait one damn minute. Don't be pulling. Mr. Buford, please, sir. Please, Mr. to do nothing. I just came to you because I was looking for help. You're a lying dog, sucker. No, I ain't. We told you we don't know nothing about them guns. <laughs> See? 
So you hold your finger, man. So what? You know too much. Get him out of here. <laughs> It's Slim. I thought about it. Well, he's hard as hell to hit. Anyone can be gotten to. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, man. One day, I'm on top of the world. And now this thing with Silky Slim. He must be crazy. You think I won't let him move in on my territory, and I'm not going to do nothing about it? Right. Who does he think he is? He's messing with Geechee, Dan Buford. Right. I will kill the punk. Trying to off me, I will murder the sucker. gonna be your life. You got a life too, Silky Slim. I'm giving you two minutes. We'll make a deal now. Or you're gonna be wearing wings. Well, take your best shot. No deal. Oh, come on, man. Let's be reasonable. There ain't nothing to be reasonable about. Look, Gitche. I said let's talk, my man. You team up with me. And we'll rule this town from river to river. Never will so few owe so much to so many. That's the one. He, he, he's the one we're after. Shut up over there. But he's the one who robbed Madame Zenobius. So what? But, but he, he stole something that night. S something he don't know about. Something that's worth a lot of money. Yeah. I told you all to shut up over there. Don't be bugging me with a spinny attic crap at a time like this. You got one minute, Geechee. But this ain't no penny any, Mr. Geechee Dan. No, sir. It's worth a fortune. Mr. Geechee Dan, it's worth a fortune. That's right. Uh, we'll share it with you, Mr. Geechee Dan. You know how much it's worth? It's, it, it, it's... 300,000. What'd you say? 300,000 in, in diamonds. Slim. $300,000 in diamonds? Yeah, but he don't know nothing about it, see? How you know he knocked off Zenobius? Go oh, talk faster, get oh. your eyes. Oh, 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 of course, that's what he said when he robbed the place. He said, never have so few owed so much to so many, you see? And and, and and he had a mask on at the time, but we recognized his voice. Huh? Oh. Yeah. He's the one. Well, what about the diamonds? Your time's up, DJ. Give me a couple of minutes, Slim. What's I'm mean? talking it over with my boys. One minute, my man. All right, come on, come on. Talk, talk. Well, me and my man, we was going in, imagine Zenobia, and we was behind these two African gentlemen who was going in there. And first, see, the doorman, he wouldn't let him in. But then they showed him a letter from their lawyer that said they were very important people in the diamond business. So the doorman, he apologized to him, and he let him in. So, later on that evening, I was in the John and I was relieving myself. And the two Africans came into the bathroom. Now, they didn't know I was in there because I was sitting on the John. And one of them, I heard him say, what did you do with the diamonds? 
So the other one said, they're in my lawyer's office, and they'll be safe there for the next 10 days till we get back from Washington. And then the buyer will come in from California. And the other African said, how much you think we're going to get for these stones? So the other one said, $300,000. So they left, and I kept running out. I talked to my man about getting to the lawyer's office to hit the place and get them diamonds. And that's when Silky Slim come in and held everybody up and took their wallets and their money and along with it, the lawyer's letter with the address of where the diamonds is. Uh-huh. So that's why you've been sniffing around to help you find the letter? Yes, sir. Because if you're lying, the undertaker gonna visit your relatives. Okay, DJ. Let me hear it. All right. We can make some kind of deal. Come on in. Good. Everybody keep their hands where we can see them. Okay. Make sure you come through that door the same way. I put him away. Saturday night. No skin off me, man. So let's move on. Now, I got something we can work on together. It's a $300,000 proposition. I'm interested. 50-50. And if we wrap it up, then we can talk maybe about some togetherness on a Permanent basis. What's the deal? You left Zenobius the other night loaded down with personal effects, among which is a document that will lead us to the $300,000. Now, this simple document ain't got no meaning until I tell you what it connects up with. And I ain't gonna tell you until you bring back every bit of the personal property you lifted. Uh, <laughs> You won't figure it out in a million years, Slim. How do I know you ain't running a game? My word is my rep. Well, well, of course, if you didn't hit Madame Zenobia's last Saturday night, then the whole thing is academic. You got a deal. Good. Yeah. Now, we'll meet in a neutral place. And I'll let you know where when I call you and tell you what time. 
I'll be there with three of my boys, and you show up with three of yours. Look to see you around. Uh, you will. And I... Uh, order me a new car. That is, if you want to be comfortable riding around in your own. some family mementos in it, and if it's all the same here. Now, before we leave on our annual picnic, I'd like to bring to your attention at this time. He's going on this picnic. Don't say it. That way of everything yeah, happened, like we got the perfect alibi. And uh, the saying that, that comes back into my mind from that war was loose lips sink ships. Well, better know it. He said that in the Second World War. Because he wanted people to keep their mouths shut. Listen a little more. Amen. Loose lips Amen. sink ships. Hallelujah. And the looser the lips are, the faster the ship sinks. Amen. And some of the lips in this congregation done sunk aircraft carriers. Speak the truth. <laughs> Friends, I say to you tonight, if we were as fast on the hip as we are on the lip, we'd have a bigger church here. Better know it. Let me tell you about some of the people in this congregation, friend. You know what they're doing? A lot of the people in this church have been going around spreading falsehoods, lies, and rumors, trying to ruin the reputation of a lot of other people in this church. Amen. They go around trying to rock somebody else's cradle, hmm. yeah. Yeah. trying to get a piece of somebody else's pie, Dang trying me. to covet somebody else's mate for their own. Yeah. Yeah. Loose lips. Friends put in motion by lechery and sinful thought is sinking some of the great ships of marriage. They're going down on the rocks. That's what they're doing. Amen. Sink. Bubbler, bubbler, bubbler. Because <laughs> lips won't, won't shut up and help the buoyancy keep them floating across the top of the river of happiness. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the loose lips that go around kissing on lips that don't belong to them, that go around lying on folks. The loose lips that make young girls make promises they know their bodies can't stand. That's the kind of lips I'm talking about. Friends, we got to learn to control them lips. Tighten up them ears a little tighter. We got to learn to call on the Lord and ask him to teach us some discipline. 
Remember, children, loose lips are everywhere. There's no one place you can go and all the lips are there. Loose lips move around. Loose lips are among you in the pews. Amen. They're among you in the choir. Yes, sir. There are loose lips among the deacons. Certain things got out about a meeting we had there last Tuesday night that nobody should have known. Yeah. Had to be among the deacons. It's among the children in the Sunday school. I hear them loose lips saying, I ain't going to put in this money. I'm going to spend it on candy. <laughs> I done heard so many bad things about so many of y'all till I wept with sadness last night. Last night, my heart hung heavy, friends. I felt so bad, I almost went out and bought a bottle. You better yeah. not move. Watch out there now. Watch out there. Friends, I fought temptation. And that's what we're going to have to learn to do. When we get the temptation to let our loose lips loose, fight it. Hallelujah. We got to learn to get off the wrong foot and step out on the good foot. And feel good. When you feel good, you look good. And you want to do good things. You want to make other people happy. Because it makes you happy yourself. Yeah. Friends, we need more romance and less hot pants. Come on with it now. Come on with it. Run some water on the hot pants. <laughs> Go out and put your sprinkler on and run through. You want to cool your hot pants off? We need more midnight sleeping and less midnight creeping. Yeah. Help us, oh Lord. Help us. Somebody got to do something. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Let's just stand there, brother, as we get ready to dismiss ourselves for our picnic. Can I get one more amen for the Lord? Amen! Truly wonderful, brother. I want you to call your boss and tell him that his office is going to be burglarized this afternoon and have the police take it out, all right? But now, no, we'll just do what I ask you to do. Be out of the city for a few hours. Keep everything warm. I'll see you later. What it is? Move it.
I, I ain't had this much fun since I was in reform school. Yeah? Which one was you in? Watersburg. No. How's the Charlottetown? Now, watch this. I'm gonna stay second on you turkeys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Come on, See if you can get me a chisel and a hammer. A what? A chisel and a hammer. Where am I gonna get a chisel? Look in the toolbox of the bus, Dodo. Don't you think it's time you told me about what's going on with your new friends? We're just working with them to get the ticket, honey. Steve! Now, don't worry. We're closer to that ticket than you realize. Okay, if you say so. I better go get the girls ready for the African ceremonial pageant. <laughs> Hello. Hey, baby, what's happening? Sure, I can talk. Girls, split. Oh, no, 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 you stay right where you are. No, no, I'll get back to you later. Hang up now. I'll be a son of a... Everything's gone wrong. They didn't get the diamonds. Not only they didn't get them, but they got busted. All of them. And one of them talked. No, nah. mm. not my boys. They don't talk. My neither. But somebody did. Because the cops is looking for me and you. Yeah, they just bustled into my apartment with a warrant for both of us. Somebody did talk. I think you'll be better get out of here so we can kind of talk this thing over. Yeah. Let's roll. Uh, Mr. Silky Slim. Out of my way, fool. Hey, we could have been set up. What about these two? Maybe we were set up. I'll go check you out good. And if you ain't clean, I'll come in back here and pick up your liver. Now move out of there, sucker. And get the heap out of there. Hey, boss! Look! Trouble! Let's get the hell out of here. We can't get out of here. It's only one road out of here, and that's it! Got to think of something fast. You gotta think of something fast. This whole dumbass trip was your idea. Hang on to your cool, sucker. There's got to be something. There's got to be a way out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, officer, look, look, what's going on? We have a warrant for the arrest of one Nicodemus Williams, alias Silky Slim, and one Daniel Buford, alias Geechee Dan. We don't have anybody in our congregation with names like them. Geechee Slim and Silky Dan. <laughs> you mind if we look around? Oh, no, sir, officer. You Go right ahead, go right ahead. Slim's car. Yeah. Open. Nothing here, sir. They're here someplace. All you gotta do is point them out. Go do the rest. I can't. They'll do me in. Don't you understand? I can't do it. Now move. Get out of the way. <laughs> Mr. Silky, wait. Wait. Mr. Silky. There they go.
You all right, baby? I'm fine. I'm doing all right. How's, how's Wardell? He's in another wing. Irma's with him. He's OK. And the ticket? It's safely hidden away at home. <laughs> well, Sarah, we're on our way. Oh, now, Sarah, <laughs> don't you cloud up on me, girl. Look here. You got to go shopping for us. A backyard. A southern one. And listen, I know this restaurant across town, seafood restaurant, where they got some of the best food in the world. <laughs> uh, live music and dancing. And listen, now that we can afford it, we're going to have to go out and do this town upright. Yeah. Oh, I got my, my red dress and my high heel sneakers at home waiting, baby. <laughs> Tree. You are the tree. This the tree. You the tree. You are the tree. <laughs> 